Whoops-a-daisy, I seem to have gone shopping. So today is a full-on do as I say, not as I do clip. And today I thought we'd talk about hellebores and designing with them, growing them. Tis the season. So I'm a great believer in paying it forward. <laughs> and uh, while as a flower farmer and somebody who teaches other people to run small businesses, I always say, save your money and spend it wisely. Sometimes you get a rush of blood to the head or even a rush of double hellebores. And um, you can't resist having a splurge. So neighbours of ours are Plant World in milton on Stour, just outside Gillingham in Dorset. And they have got, if you're anywhere near here, they've got hellebores in full flower. Of course they're in full flower, it's March. Um, and they've got a special offer. <laughs> so they are only <clears throat> £30 for two, which is not a cheap way to grow hellebores. Uh, but just really... Sometimes, sometimes you've just got to give in. So I saw these on Tuesday when I went to get some compost um, and I left, it is now Thursday, so it took 48 hours for me to go, oh, stuff it. I know I should find them online and I know I should order them from a wholesaler and I know I should pay less for them and I know I should buy them as smaller plants and let them establish slowly. I should do all of these things. But... It's been a long, hard winter, and I'm, we're in the process of uh, restoring this barn up the field, and I'm making the stretch of woodland around it look attractive. Uh, and it's woodland that we planted when we first came here 18 years ago, so it's, it's, it's more established, surprisingly well established. And I'm very inspired uh, by another flower farmer. Anyway, enough for the moment. So if this is your first visit to the channel, please subscribe, press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks we give you along the way are helpful, you can always buy me a coffee or better still, join my club where we have all sorts of fun and games, lives at fives and uh, bits and pieces. Anyway, have a look and be inspired. Um, thanks very much for visiting and let's get on with the clip. So I'm very inspired by um, a flower farm in, I think they're in North Carolina or Georgia, in America, called Three Porch Farm. And they have a bit of woodland which is underplanted with masses and masses of hellebores, which they cut for floristry. And I long for something like this. I don't want my hellebores to be all in beds because my beds tend to be and very you know bright sunshine to have a hellebore only relatively shady it's 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 too much management but i have got lots of now 18 years since we planted it dryish woodland with a good now 18 years since we planted it a good under layer of leaf mold most of the trees are deciduous uh the woodland doesn't get overgrown with grass in the summer or nettles. We've kind of managed that a bit in the woodland. And I've been establishing snowdrops and all sorts of things in, in it. And I'm really inspired to um, take a leaf out of Three Porch Farms book and experiment with hellebores in the woodland. I did buy last winter five very small, I mean, they were almost barely more than a root, um, hellebores, which I put in the ground in the, in the woodland and they survived incredible heat last summer, 40 degrees and an incredible drought. And they're fine. They're not flowering, but they only went in this big. So they're leaves and they're, you know, they're, they're fine. They'll come along. Um, so rather inspired by their success and the fact they've survived and are happy in there and by Three Porch Farm, I thought I would buy some hellebores and put them in the ground. Now, I should have bought these wholesale, you know, 20 or 30 of them from a wholesale perennials nursery. 
but I like Plant World. They're very nice people and um, they're my neighbourhood nursery. And so, yes, it cost a bit of money. <laughs> but you can't be able to treat yourself from time to time, haven't you? So which varieties have I bought? Well, this is Lucy. This very dark one. Isn't she beautiful? Aubergine. And this spotty double is Cinderella. There we go, in a ball dress. Isn't she lovely? And this lighter double is Larissa. And there, isn't she lovely? Very nice. This one, yeah, okay, I know. I bought a few. Uh, this is Molly's White. She's a single, but look, she's got a lovely green flash, flush to her, to her petals. I like her very much. And last but not least, we've got uh, this one. Very tall, single, good colour. Anna's red and of course when I plant them they're all going to hybridize all over the place I won't get such perfect colors going they, they're notoriously sexy um hellebores and they uh like to get it on with each other big time and then you get all sorts of mix they 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 hybridize all over the place if they like it and that I don't mind either I think I've got some nice base and they can all hybridize and do what they like so I'm quite happy with that um, but there's another reason I bought these uh, these hellebores. Is I went out, I wanted to do a hellebore clip because people sometimes struggle using hellebores in floristry designs. And I've got lots of top tips and I wanted to do a hellebore design as we're coming into hellebore season for all of you guys. Um, and so I went and looked at my hellebores that I've already got in the garden. I may have a few. Uh, and they're not quite ready for cutting. What you need with a hellebore when you want to cut them is one of the flowers on the stem needs to be beginning. It needs to have been visited by a bee. Um, and so it needs to be beginning to, to form a seed pod. And here you can see this stem here. What? Oh, come on, you silly thing. Get everything out of the way. So this stem has three flowers on it and the bottom one is beginning to form a seed pod. You can see the circle of stamens have fallen off which because it's been visited and pollinated and it's beginning to make seed head here. If I cut this stem it will last much better. If you're cutting hellebores and they haven't been visited, one of the flowers on the stem has not been visited, they won't last terribly well. And that's fine because what you can do is float them. So if, you, if, you're, if your hellebores haven't been visited yet by a bee or an, a person who can pollinate it, they will still have stamens. Those you can snip and float. If you find you've got stems with seed pods developing, those you can use in floral designs. So I'm going to make a floral design. I'll float some and I'll make a floral design and uh, we'll see how we go. And the thing about floating them is you still want some wow factor. So you want, what you want is a pretty bowl to float them in and if possible to give them some height so that you spot them. They don't look like a plate of biscuits on the table. They, you're sort of declaring their presence. And so keep an eye out at second hand shops because this <laughs> is a crystal bowl that I bought some years ago at a charity shop for five or six pounds. And I don't often have the opportunity to use it, but it's just right for floating hellebores. So let's have a look at that first. So I'm going to check over the stems and I'm going to cut, just cut the heads off a few of these hellebores when they've still got their stamens showing. 
I'm being careful to keep any that have uh, the seed heads developing because I want them for my my vase arrangement I'm going to make. Um, but here's one and I'm just going to snip it off. It's quite good I'm doing this because I'm planting them and if they're not flowering, then the plant will use energy to root itself. So I'm quite happy to be using all of these for floristry. <laughs> um, because although when I plant them, I won't be able to see where they are. They're, I know they're in woodland, I'm not going to mow them. Um, but they will spend energy rooting themselves rather than flowering, which is not a bad thing. So look, I've cut this stem here, snip off the end and literally float it. I'll show you. And there's one floating on its own. And now I'm going to pick a few more and we'll see what it looks like. And look, how pretty is this on a scale of one to 10? <gasps> I just love it. And I haven't put any of the very, very dark aubergine ones in because I love them too much to cut them. And I've only, and each plant has very few on. So that's why <laughs> I haven't put them all in, but I think as a way to use a little pedestal crystal vase. That's very, very pretty. Right, that's idea number one. Right, for the next bit, I've got a couple of inches of boiling water in a vase. The reason I'm using a vase is then you can see what I'm doing. And I think there's a lot of talk about searing, um, which is possibly confusing. So it's probably easier to see it. I'm going to cut. So here's a stem there it has the developing seed pod here there's one flower still in full flower and I want to get it in the water really quickly but I also want to strip down the sides and I'm just using my my uh the sharp end of my snips these are Niwaki snips and they're very sharp. This really helps with the absorption of water. And what I do, so that's gonna help with the absorption of water, but I'm now going to get it into the boiling water where it's going to have a few minutes, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, kind of cooking the cellulose drinking cells open. Very, very simple. That's all I'm doing. And often in America, you see people doing this with handfuls of hellebores or poppies or all sorts of things. And they're doing it with a, with a like a, not a flamethrower, but you know, like a, a lit flame. You know, you get a gas thing that you light the oven with. That's very good, or a lighter. It's a good way to cook open the cellulose drinking cells. So that's why we do it. Right, I'm gonna quickly cut a few more while the water's still hot. So once they've had 30 seconds or a minute in the boiling water, I'm just gonna fill the vase up with cold and let them stand for an hour or two just to really drink. Now, as usual, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, but I'm sort of doing an Ikebana-ish arrangement. And you get these lovely little flower frogs. These are from Niwaki. And they're stainless steel, so they don't, um, rust. I've got old flower, flower frogs that are very rusty and I'm just going to put, I've got a few of them in this bowl, I'll show you. The old flower frogs I've got, these are horrible old rusty things. I use them quite a lot, uh, but they're not very beautiful. If I put them in a glass vase, they'll make the water dirty and it won't look very nice. Um, so I would I use them quite a lot, but they need oiling and cleaning and they're a bore, the fiddly. Whereas these little um, mm. Niwaki ones don't. I'll show you what they look like in the in the vase. There, so I've just popped them in the vase and they're just going to give a little bit of support for what I'm adding in. So with Ikebana, the idea is that the floristry is extremely restrained. So you might have two or three stems, each creating a perfect arabesque. It's about 
not minimalism, but, but very, very fine line. And obviously my style is a bit kind of, bit more um, uh, herbaceous border than that. <laughs> but I'll show you just to give you an idea. And then I'm actually going to do something that suits me. And uh, because that's what I like. So this is, is hot to the touch because it's been in the hot water and uh, it's had its sides stripped. And look, you can stand it up. <laughs> Easier said than done. And it's about balancing. I've got to get it to balance. Mm. I might need other things that are going to help keep it standing. But if I pick it up, you'll be able to see. So there's my tall hellebore. Woo! With her developing seed head. And if I pull her. She's a bit hot, top heavy. It's about balance. And before I go any further, I just want to show you, you can see where the colour on the stem has changed. That's where she's cooked in the hot water. And so if I snip any of this stem off, I won't take it further than where the cooking, so the cooking stops here. So if I'm going to re-snip, I need to re-snip within that space so that I'm using, so there will be the place where the, where the cellulose drinking cells have been cooked open. So I need something to help support my little, my hellebook. She's tall and glorious. And I think I have cut down this little bit of willow and I think it will do the job. That's gonna ha stand quite nicely. And this is the bit I cut it down with and I'm going to put it on the other side. So you've got a very, very simple tree. Woo! And I'm knocking them over with my... with my hellebore. And then I'm going to thread the hellebores through the middle and they are supporting one another. And that's a really, really simple Ikebana kind of look. I'll pull away so you can see it. Now I'm quite pleased with that. Very, very, very simple. And it's all about the simplicity and the fine lines. And also very charming to look at with the bowl of the upturned hellebores looking like a little, you know, little miniature pond. <laughs> anyway, so there we have uh, the Ikebana look, which is, it's not my favorite look, but you know, it is a very fine, quiet, thoughtful look. We've got the floating hellebores. And now we're going to do something that's a bit more me. So this is a really lovely heavy bottomed vase that I was given by a friend years ago. They were clearing out their vase cupboard. Always say yes when people are clearing out their vase cupboard. It's a great little vase. I like its squat shape, its weight, it's never gonna fall over. You can fill it and it won't be too tall for a dinner table. And I've got a little, another glass flower frog. Uh, so it's a different kind of frog. This one is a vintage one that I found in a secondhand shop or a charity shop. And um, you can see the holes where the stems can go if you want to. And it's a really easy, simple way of just supporting the flowers. I love a glass vase and I don't like using things in the glass that make the glass ugly. I think one of the nice things about using, about creating in a glass is that the glass catches the light and you have this sort of arrangement of flowers up here, but it feels light in here. 
because then it feels as though the flowers are sort of dancing. Uh, call me a very strange person, but I like all this stuff. Anyway, I'm just going to put some water in it and I'm going to do something so simple that uh, anybody can have a go. Right, proper using up the leftovers. I've got a handful of grisolinia out of a bucket that's been sitting on the side. I'm going to re-snake the stems because these have been cut several days ago. I just want to keep those cellulose drinking cells open. And I'm going to pop them in slightly any old how. Hello. Um, I'm going to make sure that the stems are clean. I don't want any anything in the vase to be to make the water dirty. Really, really simple. I'm filming, darling. Hold on, I'll turn you off because um, in a nice way. But Fabrizio's camera shine, I'll let him in. He's disappeared, so I'm gonna just carry on. I don't like this one, it's too tall. So really simple arrangement of grisolinia, which uh, one of you very kindly told me is a New Zealand native. There we go. <laughs> and I am going to take my gorgeous little stems of hellebores and kind of any old how, pop them into the vase. And the nice thing about this frog, because it's got sort of quite separate holes, is it does mean that everything has a little bit of space from itself, from each other. So the, the flowers aren't having an argument. They've got plenty of room and <laughs> I'm sorry, I've disappeared. But I'll, sh I'll be here in a minute. I'm just getting, literally, this is a five minute idea. I don't worry too much if any of your stems are a bit shorter than the others. I like a shorter stem in the middle of the arrangement. It fills up the space. And that's how things grow. It's sort of, you know, we're making miniature gardens always. So allow things to, to sit as if they're in the garden. Very, very simple. I'm coming around so I can see what you're seeing. Oh yes. So that is two kinds of hellebores and one kind of grisolinia and anywhere in the house that would be really really attractive. Inadvertently it has got a nice sort of sweep to it so that it's higher up here and it's sweeping over. I have one more ingredient that I'm going to add because it, I think it's a bit like adding sugar to cream to add grit i need twig in this and that's and then i'm going to finish so i'm just going to get i've got rather a nice twig to add so since in the very far off distant past this is in tiny little bit inspired by japanese floristry let's add cherry blossom so this is wild cherry blossom. It's exactly the same tone of pink and purple that the, um, that the hellebores have. I've got long twigs, and so I'm going to cut them off where it's convenient and use all of the twigs. You won't see where I've cut, like this. Uh, 
and I'm going to use that which I cut off the top from and that was the top. I'm giving myself more and again snip up the stems snip up to increase the drinking cellulose drinking cell area this will make them last longer and kind of any old how i'm not i'm not obsessing about which way they're going in i trust in this case the material is so beautiful that the material is really doing a lot of the work for me i don't need to i don't need to make it really sing i'm going to cut this one off well no i'm not hang on we'll see how it looks i'm going to continue my curve over here with it Right, let me pull you back and you can see what I've done. It's very simple. And there we have just a handful of hellebores, a handful of grisolinia, three or four twigs of about to blossom wild cherry blossom. If you find that your hellebores getting caught up on each other, you can always unhook them from each other if they're if they're stuck anywhere. And look at that color, isn't that just gorgeous? And that, because I've seared them, and because each stem has one flower that has is starting to develop a seed head, and because I have stripped, run my scissors down the side of each stem just to increase the cellulose drinking cells, they won't last forever but they might do five days in a not too hot room and there we have three ways with hellebores i hope you love them as much as i do i can i can honestly i'm terrible i can i sort of cut flowers and then i sort of worship them for a bit yes now i'm off to plant them or rather have an argument with Fabrizio about where each one goes. But what we both know is that they will look very nice tucked into this wooded area. And yes, the eagle-eyed amongst you will have spotted that I may have picked up a tray of wild primula while I was there. So I'll see the club members at five o'clock for today's Live at Five about marketing flowers. I have one hour. Time to get planting. <laughs>